Hello, my name is Casey Rush, and today I will be telling the tale of Little Red Riding Hood for my Information 5440 class. Little Red Riding Hood is a story of European origins, and it is a cautionary tale to children to always listen to their parents and to stay on the path, for you never know what consequences will arise if you don't. There once was a little girl who was so beautiful, cheery, and bright that everyone adored her including her grandmother. Her grandmother once gave her the gift of a little red cape that the girl wore so often that she affectionately became called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red's mother pulled Little Red aside and asked her if she could take some cake and wine to her ailing grandmother. Her grandmother was so sick she could not get out of bed. Little Red agreed. She wanted to do anything to help her grandmother, for she loved her grandmother too. Before she left, Little Red's mom told her, Don't stray from the path. Make sure you stay on the path and go straight to your grandmother's house. Little Red reassured her mom that she would stay on the path. Don't worry, Mom. I'll stay on the path, she said. And with that, she cheerily left the house and headed into the forest where her grandmother lived. Once she entered the forest, a wolf took notice of her. He thought she looked so scrumptious that he wanted to eat her. The wolf decided he would try to trick Little Red, so he walked up to her. Hello, little girl, he said. Hello, she replied. Where are you going, if I might ask, he asked her. To my grandmother's house, she responded. Oh, and what is that in your basket? he asked her. Some cake and wine for my grandmother. She's not feeling too well, she replied. And where does your grandmother live? He asked her. She lives a couple of miles away, underneath some large chestnut trees. Certainly you know of the place, she said. Why, yes, yes, I do know of the place, the wolf responded. It was here that the wolf decided to hatch his master plan. Certainly your grandmother would want more than that, he replied, He t said to her. What do you mean? she asked. The wolf gestured over to a nearby flower field. Would your grandmother like some flowers as well? he asked her. She looked over at the flower field, and she was so tempted to go and pick flowers for her grandmother. Certainly her mother and grandmother wouldn't mind if she left the path to go and get flowers, right? Yes, I think my grandmother would like flowers, she replied to the wolf. That's excellent, said the wolf. I'm glad I could help. And with that, Little Red trotted over to the flowers and started picking flowers for her grandmother. The wolf, on the other hand, took the information he got from Little Red and went to the grandmother's house. He knocked on the door three times, and the grandmother responded, Who is it? The wolf masked his voice. It's Little Red, he replied. Oh, my darling granddaughter, said the grandmother. I am too weak to get out of my bed. Please open the door yourself and let yourself in. The wolf opened the door, and before the grandmother could say or do anything, he gobbled her up. Then he took the grandmother's nightcap and nightgown and put it on, disguising himself as the grandmother, and lay down in the grandmother's bed, waiting for his scrumptious treat to arrive. Little Red, in the meantime, had picked a basket full of flowers for her grandmother. Realizing how many flowers she got, she decided it was time for her to go and see her grandmother, knowing that her grandmother would love the treats that she had. So Little Red went to her grandmother's house, and she knocked on the door three times. The wolf responded, masking his voice again. And who is it? It's Little Red, Little Red replied. Oh, my darling granddaughter, I am too weak to get up. Please open the door yourself and let yourself in. 
Little Red did as she was told and opened the door and came in. She went over to her grandmother's side. When she looked at her grandmother, she noticed something was off. She asked her grandmother, Grandmother, my, how big your ears are. The wolf responded, All the better to hear you with, my dear. Little Red kept going. My, how big your eyes are. All the better to see you with, my dear. Then Little Red said, My, how big your teeth are. And that's when the wolf took his chance. All the better to eat you with. And he gobbled Little Red up. Satisfied, the wolf then decided to take a nap. His belly filled with the grandmother and Little Red. While the wolf was sleeping, a huntsman happened to be passing by Grandma's house. He heard the grandmother snoring and decided that he, had, he should better check up on her and make sure that she was okay and that she didn't need anything. When he opened the door, he saw the ghastly sight of the wolf. He decided then and there that he was going to kill the wolf, for that wolf had done terrible things to him before. He was going to shoot the wolf, but he stopped. He noticed something odd about the wolf and decided that he should take another approach. So instead, he got some shears and decided to cut open the wolf. After two snips, he saw something in the wolf's belly. He continued to snip more, and he saw Little Red. She jumped out at him, thanking him for saving her. Thank you, thank you, that wolf ate us. The huntsman continued to snip at the wolf's belly. Then the grandmother came out. Oh, thank you, huntsman. Thank you for saving me and my granddaughter. When both parties were out, the huntsman decided to stuff the wolf's belly full of rocks. When the wolf woke up, his belly stuffed with rocks. He couldn't move, and he just died there with his belly full of rocks. The huntsman and Little Red and the grandma satisfied with the outcome. The huntsman took the wolf's pelt for his own. And Little Red and her grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine. And they lived happily ever after. Little Red now knowing not to trust wolves and not to stray from the path. Thank you. I hope this story has provided you with the cautionary tale to always remember to listen to your parents and to not always trust wolves.